I'm sitting in an empty sanctuary. Here I'm reminded again that the church is not bricks and mortar, but rather the church is the people of God. Right now, it's scattered. I'm sitting here hopeful that one day soon these pews will be full and the church will be gathered to give praise and honor and glory under the instruction of His Word. Today I want to take you to one of my favorite texts in the Gospel of Matthew. It's Matthew 8, starting with verse 23, where we read the account of the time when Jesus stilled the storm. This narration is one of the first ones that I heard growing up in Sunday school. Jesus calms the storm. I learned that he was a God who was of great power and great strength and could do anything. That was the lesson I took away as a child. But as an adult, I've looked at the text again and realized there are several points to be made, particularly to those would-be followers of Jesus, the likes of you and me. The text tells us, Then he got into a boat, and his disciples followed him. So far, so good. And then these details. Without warning, the Bible says. That means that out of nowhere came a storm. It was an unbelievable surprise to everybody. Where'd that come from? Then a furious storm came up on the lake. It was not just without warning, but it was furious. Lightning and thunder and wind and rain. The boat was being tossed. It was a furious storm out of nowhere. The Bible says, so that the waves swept over the boat. The Greek language has a Greek verb tense there that not only says the waves hit once, but the waves came over and over and over and over again. It was bad. There was no relief. There was no rest. The news each moment was worse than the moment before. A furious storm. Suddenly, waves swept over the boat again and again. And then the Bible says, but Jesus was sleeping. Why was he sleeping? Well, I think we learn that in a minute. The Bible says the disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. I think they were saying, will you grab a bucket? Would you grab an oar? Would you trim the sails? Would you help us batten the hatches? That's what they clearly had in mind when they woke him up. What are you doing sleeping? And then the most surprising thing happens. The Bible tells us in the next verse that while the waves were still crashing, the wind was still blowing, and the boat was still being tossed, Jesus replied to his disciples, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Jesus rebukes them for being afraid, even while the wind and the waves are hitting the boat again and again and again. He hasn't stilled the storm yet. That's the genius of the order of Matthew's gospel as he relays the account. While the storm was still howling, Jesus rebuked the disciples because they had such little faith. Now, if I'd been there, one of the disciples, I certainly would have said, well, Jesus, the reason we're afraid is look around you. This is one step from destruction. We're going down. That's why we're afraid. But Jesus wouldn't hear any of it. No, the reality is, as fearful as they were and frantic as they were, he was challenging them to understand that because he was with them in the boat, they were not going down. That, in fact, it was well with their soul. If you have committed yourself to Jesus Christ, if you have confessed your sin, if you have trusted Him as your Savior, if you had determined to be a follower of Jesus, then it is well with your soul no matter what storm hits. That's the lesson of the text. And then the Bible tells us, Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. There's the power. There's the lesson of the power in Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he stilled the storm. He rules the waves, but also the rebuke to the disciples. Why are you so afraid? It's a challenge to me today as the storm hits and the news continues to be a little worse than the day before. Why are you so afraid? No, I need to say along with you, it is well with my soul. It's time for me to demonstrate my faith along with you. It is well with my soul, even 
when the storm rages. Amen.